Urgot and then five bot laners banned out. Yeah. See what the decision is here as two teams. It's Zephyr versus Acorn as well for the drafting coaches. Yeah, really cool just, to think there's of. There's too many things. There's too many things. Well, LeBlanc is the champion between Pawn and Faker. Could there be any other one? Oh. MSI 2015 final was, game five could never be forgotten. No Morgana versus LeBlanc. I was going to say, where's the Morgana yeah, band? Yeah, that, be, that would be next level <laughs> Atlas. But we'll see a Thresh ban as that continues to be really respected in the bot lane. I think Braum is super high priority, but so far it has been filtering into the picks rather than the bans. Cassiopeia, in spite of some nerfs, going to be banned by Kingsa. Yeah, Cassiopeia, like, not taken out of the meta with the nerfs to the base damage of the Q, and, of course, Miasma, again, taking a little bit of a hit based on damage. It's still going to be just as hey. disgusting as she used to be. As Zoe's going to be banned away. Tempt definitely demonstrating that Zoe is pretty damn strong right And now. with the Flex Assassins taken out, I'm a big fan of this Zoe ban because I think Zoe is right up there as a blind pick mid laner once again. Oh, Silas, oh, oh, oh. first pick. What the hell? All right. All right, we are hijacking this game from the word go. Is Karma pretty damn good pick into the Silas. And uh, we'll meet the Frost Fancy. Welcome will be back, in. Yorick Mori. Welcome, oh. Silas, for the first time. Do you know what the weather is on the side of King's Own Pub? What's Smithy? the weather? It's real frosty over there. And how many frost lanes will there be? Because Frostmancy, Ezreal, and the duo That's lane. That's what I mean. Is, it's all frosty. It's being forecast by some. Now, SKT would expect Frostmancy to be locked in if they don't take it as a first pick. So I'm interested to know what teams pick against it. For now, at least, it might be the Silas top. It might not. <laughs> People would love to see Faker on this pick, of course. It's, Caps has been popping off on mid lane. Oh, man. Silas around Going the back world. Mata's old favorite. Would you really blind pick it? I would say no. Now, Karma Ancient Coin looks pretty good. Sorry, uh, Vlad Ancient Coin against Karma looked pretty good in game number one of our first series. Evolving story on the Frostmancy. We zoom in on SKT. No surprise that whenever Clid has Lee Sin available, why not lock it in until enemy teams actually start banning it? Yeah, exactly right. But the Kaiser is going to be returned to here this time from Teddy. We saw Infinity Edge in Rageblade was where Ruler went, but honestly was a non-factor that game. And it's left open the Tom Kench Ezreal as well as the Karma. Tom Kench is an odd one though, Papa, because uh, I believe this Tom may have an opportunity to actually do some farming down on that bottom side. And is this going to be a champion that can benefit from the extra gold? Let's wait and see what the meta is with the Ezreal because there's no guarantee we will see no farm Ezreal farming up for 500 gold quests. We'll yeah. evaluate that as things go and then check in with it. But I'll remember the question. The bans here, you could just go Alistair Braum and remove some tools here. Braum's really strong against Ezreal and Karma. Stopping Karma's ability to even hit the first target with the Q, and then, of course, Ezreal's ultimate. Being repelled by that. Zooming in on SKT's side, how did they infer? Right now, they know it's top lane Karma almost certainly. I don't think it's going to be mid lane Karma, so they can start targeting out some bans. The Vladimir is benefit, bene benefited by the Rise being taken away. Yeah, is the Vladimir a ban that uh, Kingzone can think about now? It's a, th their it's last a thought. Option? For sure, it's a thought here. Again, it could just be Silas top. It feels like Silas's biggest home is the top lane. That's where I've seen him in other regions so far. But of course, SKT will be debuting Silas here in the LCK. Is Orn going to be banned away? Most likely from Marta. Interesting ban. It's an old favorite of Marta. He and Death used to play Mordekaiser and Orn bot lane. Yeah. Find a lot of value. We called it the Bruise Bros because they kind of together gave everything a melee champion wanted. Speed ups and stuns. Oh my. Mm -hmm. So the Orn taken away here. We might see Ezreal plus Orn if that Frostmancy Ezreal becomes a thing in the future, but not in this game. And Jax, one of the preeminent junglers. And something that Cuz has found success on also. Definitely something worth considering bad. Very high win rate in solo queue and feels very strong with a lot of other things changed. Now, things that aren't as strong. The Aatrox has definitely been slammed down a bit. Yeah, the Umbral Dash taking an extra hit and no longer having the sustain, much like Akali, uh, has really hurt him. But two seconds to go. And Urgot Kingzone is still, still available. About it That's the weird thing here is that Urgot yeah. has actually been ignored this entire time. And then Aatrox has been taken over Urgot, which is... Very peculiar, given that Urgot's power level is right up there. It feels like a at jungle this point, pick at this point. But it also, at this point, feels really kind of like, what's going on here? Like It yeah. almost feels like it's being left open, wafting in the air. This apple pie is so tasty, does it smell? But it might just be ignored. It might actually fall through picks and bands. It would be unthinkable Victor, okay. almost. And the victor going to be taken here. Popular pick of Khan this season. Thing. Yeah, continuing to flex between Faker and Khan with the Silas and the victor. Might only be decided right at the end. Exactly. We'll wait and see. What the decision is here can also go Frostmancy, by the way, in yep. the top lane. Yep. 
Final pick, probably gonna be support for the Kaiser here. It's only Tom Kent, so you can't, don't necessarily have to go for the most respectful 2v2 bot lane, and it's probably gonna be Gragas support coming through, and that's really the champion that makes sense, so we'll hold our judgment on the final assignments for all these champions, but we think we've nailed it. Yep. This Kings and Dragon X. Yeah. What's Pawn playing? Exactly. Is it the Aatrox? I mean, he theoretically could be playing that into the Silas if they want to. Giving Silas an extra ability to keep himself alive and dash around things would be this a would scary be an oldie. one. As, yeah, oldie, but potentially a goodie as Pawn locks away his Azir, and he's happy to play this champion in absolutely any meta. Whenever Pawn hits the Rift, you have to respect that the Azir will most likely be played. Very interesting champion, because it's been polarizing from Pawn. Played it a lot in 2017 and 2018. He's had big Emperor Divide engages, but also some big whooshes as well, Atlas. So yeah. it's a champion, unlike some of his other picks, where we kind of want to see what it looks like. He's playing with his tail up. He's coming off a four-match win streak and a break. But Pawn sometimes does fly to deceive on the Azir. You look at Azir, though, against a melee mid laner, potentially. Cool to see Faker on the Silas if we do get it. We'll get that final 22, confirmation. 21. There it is! Gonna All be right. mid lane Silas here. It's melee versus a champion that can dunk on melees. But the Kingslayer does provide a lot of consistent sustain in some of those melee range trades. Fun to see it. Might be the first time internationally we get the Azira versus Silas matchup. Yeah, exactly. And also, imagine hijacking an Emperor's Divide that Faker has demonstrated he has pretty good mastery at yeah. utilizing. Having a gap closer more reliable than Shifting Sands might actually help Faker really decide. Some of these team fights with a hijacked Emperor's Divide, so we'll see exactly how it is going to go with Faker debuting the Silas here in the mid lane, and who better to debut a champion than Faker? Away from the tanks, unless he goes for an off-tank build in the mid lane, Victor, the most played by Carney, continues with it. Now we get to look at the enemy and say, okay, what are the steals like? And Karma might not be right, but there's the potential to go unkillable on that Aatrox ultimate. Like you say, Emperor's Divide and True Shot Barrage can be big, and maybe even some rotations Oh yeah. from Faker this game. SKT versus King Zone. This could be a spicy one with both teams in some decent form. No surprises that SKT has a few more fans, but we're gonna zoom in on Faker and the debut of Silas in the LCK. Also one of the first, definitely the first that I've seen in the mid lane so far, but you can't watch all of the competitive League of Legends matches around the world, Pub Smithy, I'm sorry. So uh, if you guys at home have already watched the Silas in the mid lane, uh, let us know. As that's uh, I Hail of Blades Azir. And I've seen from Solo Q count and watching him play in Solo Q, he does play Aftershock on the Silas. So we are expecting an off tank build here. The likes of Iceborne Gauntlet Spirit Visage yep. might be there. Azonias might be considered. So it's still going to be kind of similar into team fight identity Maybe of the Urgot and other picks. A lot of ability to really control space on that is, look at this, Rascal has actually not gone full Frostmancy. He started corrupting Potion and trying to dunk lane a little bit harder. And Pawn has. So Pawn's got a frost. I just feel like the items are a little bit mixed up in this game. Khan has decided to go for it, though. Khan's just going to be sitting back and trying to abuse Rascal as often as possible. See whether this means that Rascal's going to be able to go battle karma here on the top side. So we've got no Frostmancy in this game because well, the word Frostmancy... Khan's got it. That's true. We have Frostmancy in from Khan in the top side, but not from Rascal, most notably. Yeah. And also not from Pawn, because he doesn't have the Mancy part. He doesn't have the Kleptomancy. So the only Frostmancy, like you say, is from Khan. It feels like there was so many debates <laughs> I know. in what actually happened between champ select and in-game. Oh, Faker takes taking turret a turret shot. shot. Yeah, that ain't great. And, well, I guess Pawn is going to spend all of his time harassing and not CSing, so that should hurt. Yep. And uh, Pawn... He's been successful so far, hasn't taken a CS, which is difficult as a Zir, because you can accidentally do it while you're throwing things forward. So I was very intrigued as to how Riot would approach nerfing Frostmancy, because the Kleptomancy plays a part. Yeah. The fact that you have Kleptomancy means you're also babied while you're generating gold with the in incremental gold generation that comes through from Kleptomancy. You're not babied here, so Pawn should take a more of a hit while he's fucking the... Uh, spell Thieves. Now, of course, he will do Spell Thieves and Frostfang very reliably. He's in a melee matchup in the mid lane, but we'll have to really check in at 10 minutes. I would love for the observers to confirm what the gold numbers are at, but just like you guys have heard about, no CSing 
for Pawn. He's going to spend basically every bit of mana and his lane phase holding down Silas as much as possible. Now 12 CS so far for Faker. And this man is a rice farmer of note. He's oh, yes. always been an amazing CSer. Can he actually hold down? We saw in game number two, there was about 30 behind the clock. So eight minutes in 50 CS is kind of what we were seeing in the Yorick matchup before it got to silly numbers. And the Yorick, you know, got the lead through other lanes. We're still evaluating all of the Frost Mancy, and we have a lot of incremental Frost Fang and Gold Generation. No CS in the top lane, no CS in the mid lane. Welcome to week four of the LCK. Yeah, a lot of zeros, and uh, they've got double zeros on the side of SKT, as of course Marta's not going to be farming either. Tucson thankfully giving some extra numbers over to Kingzone. But I guess I, I can understand the thinking here of taking Hail of Blades instead of Klepto. I guess you just want to abuse Faker out of the lane rather than letting him walk up and farm and just making more money than him. And when Hail of Blades was buffed, Azir was one of those mid laners who actually took note. It's mostly a jungle spell. We see it on Xin Zhao and Jax. But yeah. for the Azir, it gives him back some of the burst that was nerfed so many times. Right? They tried to push Azir more and more into control rather than having the burst can't plop his W onto turrets and blow them off anymore. Pascal chasing down. Uh, uh, Victor, you also, we also forecast the possibility of Deft taking into yeah. the spell phase. Do note that it is a much more standard Ezreal. The theory there is that you go Frostfang and Klepto, you're going the Klepto anyway, on the Ezreal, and then your support farms up with Relic Shield, maybe an orange support getting a lot of gold. So actually, you are proccing the quest and your support's getting farmed that in any other meta would be impossible. We're not seeing that today. But enough people around Korean solo queue are messing with it that we could definitely see it at some point in week number four. Yeah, remember there's still four more days to go after this. So this is not yep. the only time. This is the new world we live in. We're going to see it. And it's, it's only a world that's going to be happening for a very short time. I as feel well. like as a caster, I've had the most of this because we had... I did an Overwatch cast where we had a one-day meta at yep. a Hearthstone cast where remember, yeah. there was a one-day meta where the new set hadn't been released, but the nerfs to the cards had come in. Yep. Like, this is a funny world I live in where I always get <laughs> these things where you can't even look to any other region and copy color cast as smart points. Like, no, we've, we're the only ones with yep. this. So uh, let's learn on the job, Atlas. I guess we'll figure it out. There's a few fr Frost Fangs have already been completed here. Khan's gra grabbed his and... Rascal and Pawn both pick up theirs. So Rascal's still going into it, but a little bit late as Kuz is going to make his way forward. A lot of damage there on Khan, but traded back relatively nicely. Remember, Rascal will have a few more opportunities as the flash immediately used there from Khan to get back under his turret. So of course, one thing you can do when someone is focusing on the farm is to look for the turret dive with the jungler. Azir not level six. Oh, yeah. Azir. Aatrox not level 6 yet, so not going to see that descent. Aatrox and Azir, okay, we're definitely going with the A champions on the yeah. side of Kingzone. Rascal pushing up, remember he was CSing, now he's slowing down. He actually took a Frost Fang late. What is going on? I'm not sure. I feel like Rascal just, just completely didn't get it or something. <laughs> I, don't, I, can't really, I can't really explain it to you because uh, so it's, not, it's just Frost. He's just frosting the top Well, the let's top also lane. talk about why that might happen. There is still a bit of a prisoner's dilemma when it comes to starting items. When you see Klepto on the enemy, you don't want to be caught with your pants down with one person going for Klepto, the other one not, and leading to some weird things. Like, maybe he went Corrupting Potion expecting non-Frostmancy Victor, and then he's like, oh, actually, Victor's not fighting back that much. He has the Frostmancy. I need to opt into it again. So it's actually a very weird mind game. It feels like rock, paper, scissors a bit sometimes where you don't want to be yeah. caught out too much. But regardless, has gone into it late. So I don't th I think it was an intentional choice, but I am surprised to not see him double down with, say, Doran's or into, say, a uh, Dark Seal and go for the late Frost, uh, frost Fang. Yeah, just I, I just feel like it's just so free to go uh, Kleptomancy in this matchup anyway for, for Rascal because he can just farm up alongside the Victor. But all right, Rascal just going to exit the lane, just stand around and pick up some farm here. You can, you what can happens when that? no one's farming, Atlas? Well, I don't know. We're learning. Do you know what I... I okay, King Zone. Looking to move a little bit aggressively forward, but I recently watched uh, Serenity again. Uh -huh. uh, and that's all about, you know, this place where they tried to change the behavior of humans and uh, some of them got really, really aggressive and the other ones just stopped doing anything at all and just fell asleep. I feel like that's sort of uh, what might happen and hopefully it's not a curse that affects the commentators because things will get very quiet if nothing is happening. Now, one thing you don't have an excuse for mm -hmm. is backing up your jungle. Because you're not even trying to farm, so you might as well <laughs> yeah. be roaming in. So we could see some really interesting ganks. And in the late game, Atlas, suddenly LCK is back in the promised line. That's 2017, 2016. Yeah, again. exactly. We're going to have triple sightstone on the side 
of King Zone because we're going to have two people cashing in quests. So we are going to have a map with so many wards. Well, Rascal also has a huge issue with so many minions as Khan is going to get knocked up, but the kickback on to Cuz is going to even things out. And that's World Ender already on cooldown here. Cuz blowing that one very, very quickly. Just too easy to disengage from Clear. Kind of surprising. Cuz, I guess, saw more aggression than we weren't granted. Another cool thing is that Cuz can just farm up the minion wave as he, uh, as he turns up. Are you saying it's taxation season for the junglers Ooh, and for so once they're good. getting some money back? It is Valentine's week, Papa Smithy, but all of it's going, o all the love is going over to the junglers finally. Finally, the greedy junglers can cash in on the minion wave. Good times. Cashing in as well is uh, name of the game here because we're down to almost three turret plates for the bottom lane as uh, Deft and Tucson have been unrelenting in this shove. Maybe a reason why Deft decided not to go into the Frostmancy attack because he can't as abusively shove the wave if it's going to be theoretically the Tom Kench getting the last hits. He's got that sack of gold and feeling good about how the laning phase Aww, is going. Oh, he didn't get the turret plate. Yeah, I believe you're correct there. No, no timing yet on the mid lane frost fang, by the way. So 14 CS kind of irritating the quest completion timing and no clutch demands as we noted. Yep. Uh, also, top side of the map, unable to finish theirs as well. Khan will be closer because Rascal got his on his first back. That's why he's sitting on 36 CS. Because there's been CSing, this is really funny. There's actually a bounty on Deft because there's been some CSing and Victor hasn't been CSing. So remember, it's the average gold income of four people. Yep. The carries, if you will. So because there's one person not CSing, and Karma was CSing at the start, then went for late Frostfang, we're actually getting a farm bounty on Deft. And this is a reason why, another one of the reasons why going for the Kleptomancy build was important. We have farm bounties now, and if one person's not farming, the average level of farm is just going to be higher on the enemy team as a result. So, yeah. Feels like Deft is the unlucky one there. He is Ezra with Flash, so good news. Unlikely to have that bounty cashed in on just yet. Just a quirk of the system that's warped by people not farming. Look at this. Look at these minions. They're just dying. Yep. And Rascal is able to zone Khan completely out of the way here. Lee Sin's on the bottom side of the map. Never uh, have we been more like other MOBAs. Look at all this denying. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, guys. Here is the storm. Esports is not dead. As uh, Rascal comes in, Khan's going to get slowed down as Khan's... Oh, doesn't find the Infernal Chain. The turnaround now is Khan playing very patiently. It's good to see out of Khan. Now that uh, people have st stopped farming on the other side, also <laughs> a farm bounty coming on. Oh, a huge farm bounty for Faker as well. Look at this. I mean, we're in a meta on patch 9.3 where you want to kill 80 carries, right? The crit itemization yeah. is in, so... Their value has gone up. They're going to be the MVPs in team fights again. The bounties agree on that one. Both of them now have farm <laughs> bounties. It's such a funny what old What is game. a farm bounty in the jungle? And he's even. Good news. Khan has actually been the first person on the map to get his quest. So yeah. he can start farming. He gets the reprieve. Oh, Karma actually, gonna be way he, he, he has. Oh, he has, he has. You yeah. just have to look at the change. Yeah, it yeah. changed the other icon, and now we get the three to get the ultimate confirmation there. My brain just didn't work. I'm like, oh, there's no number there. So obviously it's not evolved yet. Again, we had a game pause because of Frostmancy already. So I allow <laughs> you some brain lag today, Atlas. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Bottom side of the map, some shove now available from SKT. As uh, There's a pickaxe as well as the BF sword for Teddy. Oh, these farm bounties. I know. It's just... It's a weird and wonderful uh, week we're experiencing right now, Papa. Split comes in, clears out some wards, Cuz is on the bottom side, so it's now Rascal's turn to play more respectfully, and he's going to go back home. See that? We have a lot of people joining us for the second series. Again, we went more in-depth about the rise of Frostmancy and some of the ramifications yep. of it. Please do note your clearest take-home message. This has been hot-fixed on the live client. We Don't are on patch 9.3. Do not go top lane with a Frost Fang. It will not work out. Even if your jungler gives you a bit of time where he's around on your screen, you need to be in 1,500 units of an ally, basically on screen with them. So this is a, a pro play quirk of week four of the LCK. Yes, and this is something also that uh, the teams knew about, and there was an opportunity uh, for the teams to go for the hotfix patch, and that wasn't a unanimous decision. Yep. And therefore, we are playing on non-hotfix because that was the initial plan moving forward. So this is not something that Riders just said, no, 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 you have to deal with it. This was a decision made uh, by the teams. We have to wonder and start thinking about where this game goes forward because I think the big problem for Kingzone going forward is can Karma sideline against both Victor and Silas? And I'm going to be very intrigued to see that. 
when we get to later points in the game. Faker has a lot of ages already. We'll probably go into Ice Mongol and the Spirit Visage kind of things. Probably Spirit Visage, given he's against double AP yeah. on the side. And Death will do a lot of magic damage as well. That's going to be an evolving question. Azir in team fights, we feel like it's more reliable, but Silas can kind of be super underwhelming in team fights, remind you of Tank Echo. And other times just pop off. We've hit the right ults. Yeah, well, exactly. If you can hijack the right abilities, and I mean, Emperor's Divide is now there on the side of King Zone, so Faker will have opportunities. And speaking of which, Cuz going to get a decent knock up here as Faker has World Ender available yep. if he wants to throw it out. Chain lashes are all he's throwing through as he just abducts his way forward, but that's a decent snare there onto Faker. He can get his health back relatively quickly. Infernal Chains doesn't get the pullback. As Faker's still sitting on that World Ender just to make sure he keeps himself alive. So interesting that he also gets the um, the blood uh, bar. Blood well, that's it. There's a lot of words to remember. I was just trying to remember whether it was... You nailed all your was... Yorick Mori spell names last game, so I'm oh, going to give this thanks, one to man. you as well. How are we doing with cash-ins? Okay, Fawn, who started the game with the cross bank and now start farming. Happy times. We have 71 CS already, so actually, yeah, he's probably actually doing, doing pretty fine. well. Yeah. When it comes to that gold generation. He's going to be able to make a lot of money off it as well, actually, because Azir clears out a minion wave, and while he's doing it, beats the heck out of the opponent. Welcome back. Victor versus Azir. We're back hey, again. Hey, here we go. Now we're in the top lane for some reason. It's TP Azir. We didn't note that earlier. Happy to just farm away with lots of non-interactive wave clear between the Ooh, two. Nice dodge. Here's Clid. Yeah, he's going to come on over as Pawn. We'll have to shift some sands, try and get out of the way here as the Q lands. Emperor's Divide pushes Clid out of the way as Khan flashes on forward. I mm. uh, don't know whether that stopwatch was one that you really wanted to do as he just gets Death Raid. I feel like if he had it just kept walking, it would have been a better story. But unfortunately for Pawn, it is not. And First Blood goes over to Khan. Baker turns up mid. It's the 1v1 between the Karma and the Silas. And bottom side of the map, King's own will get first turret. We always use that adage of when the dust settles, let's work this out. But there's so much dust atlas everywhere in this game I know. that we're still trying to fully understand things. We haven't even really been able to talk about Silas. He's in the mid lane. Definitely can brawl in a minion wave and do harassment damage, heal up with the Kingslayer, and push waves. Why is he so good into Urgot? And the top lane can scrap really well against some of the big scrappy champions in the meta. And just W dash to them and yep. uh, get all of your health back with that Kingslayer like you were talking about. Pawn walks up just to harass Khan. There's no minion wave there. He's pushing. So definitely my note here would be why are we so overextended to start this play from the end. Like you said, the stopwatch. Kind of a 1 out of 10 stopwatch to end things there. So unfortunately stopwatch down. Kill picked up. So nice pathing from Clid. The gold, though, nothing to speak of between SKT and Kings. Yep, absolutely. And uh, that's a trade in turrets. And that's also Shelly going over to SKT and not giving them all that much of a gold advantage. Shelly feels a little bit like Dragon used to be now that turret plates exist because you should be able to relatively reliably pick up a bunch of those turret plates if you chuck her in the right lane, meaning that it basically is just gold that you're going to get. Whereas Mountain Drake is what went over to the side of King's own. Maybe a little bit more of an investment here. Death, as, uh, Death okay. has a frostbite. He, he finally got on the hype train. So you remember when Riot really quickly introduced <laughs> the change? This is the nightmare that they were worried about. Think about how many wards there's going to be. There's going to be so many. It's going to be a most ridiculous amount of wards. 2017, baby. It's back. <laughs> oh, my God. Can we call King's own Longju Gaming and just keep going? You have a sidestone. You have a sidestone. Teddy gets propped there by Deft. That's Teddy. right. Deft is still farming things. As uh, Tucson's going to have to start lapping up some of these minions. There is, in fact, four Frost Fangs. Yeah. Uh, going on this game, pretty cool is all I have to say about that. Speaking of pretty cool, Aatrox going to be stunned up. Yeah, Rascal's going to come on over here as they're just ignoring the Chaos Storm. All too easy. Abyssal Voyage delivers Deft a kill on the bottom side of the map. Teleport will allow Deft to defend this mid lane out of turret. And Pawn's not going to get ganked on the top side. And I actually like to see this from Pawn because often a play will be made and then Pawn dies anyway on the other side of the map. Not this time. Going to be playing respectfully. It's Kaz and Tucson looking for the second Drake of the game and both of them going to Kingsa. I love League of Legends as a caster because so often it has that kind of war element of northern fronts and southern fronts and it kind of unfo unfolds like a painting or a great narrative. Yeah. This really feels like a lot of paints 
This is We're a Picasso. Onto it. This is a Picasso. It's an impressionist dude. art thing oh, going yeah. on here with like three man frost This is like that, that, that postmodernism that you just straight up don't understand. Exactly. You just you know that it's cool, right? If we were being radio casters, it's like, yes, yeah, a three man gank with the triple frost fang crew into the bot lane. <laughs> and then the Ezreal teleports mid to cover. Yep. Like, there's three teleports on one team and three frost fangs. Yep. Pretty insane is this particular game. Well, just let it waft in, Atlas. Let it just overcome you. It is a emotions. weird and wonderful universe. It is. And uh, I feel like I've used that too many times so There's far the transformation. Today. So it came in earlier. We, we just skipped yeah. over. The fact that for the laning phase, it ended up being a late item purchase there to pick things up and already cashed in for that ward power spike. Man, are they going to have complete information? Our king zone and not enough sweepers available. Oh, that's Beside really SKT. cute from Kaz. Khan dodges the knockup, but it doesn't matter. Special delivery and how to kill. Well, they're going to have an insane amount of wards for Abyssal Voyage to basically be guaranteed yeah. every time. Where is the safe place to farm? We can have the old Mata days, but on King Zone now, well, you just ward every camp because you got enough wards to. Oh, I've got, I just had an idea. Because you know how we're talking about, you know, ways to counter this uh, Frostmancy type meta. What if? Everyone gets a sweeper and you make all your money killing the overabundance of wards. Think about what this could be a record in. Could we have a record vision score? Hey, yeah, maybe. On the side of King Zone, because they're putting down and deleting wards. Pretty good for vision score, Atlas. Damn right. Well, Deft is still sitting on three. He's really got to start getting them out of his bag. Wards don't do anything if they're just looking at the inside of your bag, guys. It's a whole bunch of darkness. I don't know if I want to endorse that, because that doesn't mean just whack down your control ward anywhere on the map. <laughs> There's a lot of mixed metaphors and questions we could throw out here. All our recommendations are going to be slightly tongue-in-cheek. Yes. Aatrox nerf, Aatrox nerf was pretty severe on this patch. You don't charge two E's anymore, so you're only umbrally dashing once and then having to actually be held accountable. So we're going to wait and see that in action a bit more as the game goes on. And right now, we're just kind of halving bags of gold. There's a lot of gold to go around. It's oh, my God. 63,000 gold in the game at 19 minutes. That damage from Deft was magic damage without any ability power, just magic pen. Oh, and a bit of ability power it's coming 20 in from the AP, It's fine, thing. don't worry. It's I, nothing, yeah. I go with your original point, it's yeah. whatever. Did a lot of damage there to Teddy. And uh, we're looking for a gank here in the mid lane, but uh, nothing doing here from SKT. Deft and Tucson playing to their strong side of the map. Cuz moving on over. It's just an exchange as Faker taking a bit of damage. Here from Pawn, but isn't too worried, and the Ardent Sensor is completed. Rascal with so many targets but for the Ardent Sensor. This confirms a point I was building to. I said, one of the things I see that worries me about King Zone is that Karma might be shadowed by Silas and Victor. The moment you go uh, a rush on Ardent Sensor, you're grouping Karma. Yep. So actually, they've, uh, they've said, we can't 1-3-1 one, one against SKT like we kind of suspected. That means they're very important they find objectives in the grouping. Because there'll be many times in this game where they will lack the ability to answer a potential 1-3-1 one, one from SKT. Well, now Def needs to start landing these Qs. Land well, that, uh, landing an R is also a decent one, as Def's going to make money off that one I as well. I agree with you, by the way. It's doing too much damage. It is just its, it's so much damage for just a Frost Fang. Hey, how much AP is on that dang item? You know, they reverted those Ezreal nerfs, and people were like, yes, they're waiting to see how the changes came in. And I'm like, guys, come on. <laughs> I've been complaining about this He's since... He's really, really strong, I've been actually. complaining about this since the Casper Cup. <laughs> but don't worry, we're doing some scientific experimentation this yep. week. This I just in, till still strong, actually. The ult just does so much damage. I know. Again, if you're wondering why I'm still kind of so on the Ezreal needs to be adjusted, it's... I don't think the Ezreal's Q 1.5 second Mystic shot was... and ultimate cooldown reduction and just amount of AP fully on the enemy team was balanced around double tier build, 45% CDR every game. Yes. Those two things together, flat CDR reduction and 45% CDR, are so abusive on how Ezreal comes together that I think his ult is just out of line at the moment. But And also the fact that you can accelerate so quickly with Kleptomancy yeah. at the same yeah. time. Like There are just so many things working in harmony that makes Ezreal disgusting and disgusting very quickly. In the game, as Deft is demonstrating that with King Zone having a dragon advantage. Infernal going to be coming up next. Earth, Wind, and Fire in order. We had that song playing in the makeup room today, so yeah, that's why did. you have that on the mind. Absolutely beautiful. I remember. Will we play on the 23rd of September? 21st. 21st of September? Question? Um, we normally do, yeah. Nice. 
I made the joke before. <laughs> so let's try and work out where this fight is going to occur. Remember, it's level 14. Azir has, you know, just been farming. So yeah. the Azir damage here should be pretty big. He did not go into Kleptomancy to double down on gold generation. He's just an Azir with some items. Ow. Don't have the overlay right now. Khan poked out very early in the piece. It's an Infernal Drink, so no one wants to give this up for free. Khan has his teleport to get back. Yeah, should be able to get back in time if they want to. Cuz, going to jump on over. Has to Umbral Dash as uh, he unfortunately messed up the Blast Cone. But this that is correct, mean by the King's way. Zone, yeah, just move on out. King Zone want to roll out. I want to see the members of SKT in Vision, because that means they're not setting up for a Drake defense. Yep. Aatrox can just take it down. Pawn will make it faster. Infernal, third Drake to King Zone, and they're the ones with all the gold generation from the quests. So a lot of cheating to get this 2,000 gold lead. It's not massive, but, but items are going to come in, coming in thick and fast pretty soon. 2,000 gold lead and three of the Drakes of the three that have yeah. spawned so far yep. this game. I mean, there's just so many different options here, and Deft is the happiest man alive. How do you kill this Ezreal? He's going to have ultimate amounts of shield as Mata almost just straight up dies from his old lane opponent, a lane partner. He's like, I'm normally standing next to Deft. Let me do that again. No, 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 don't do that again. That's not what you want to do, Mata. He's going to have to go back home, and that is an outer turret just brute forced by King Zonin. This is controlled play. This is strong play. Watch Faker. He is on the prowl here. He's roaming down. It's not a TP gank. What's well, the ultimate that he's going to try and pick up here as well as Infernal Chain? Not going to be gathered. And he does get the Aatrox passive with the World Ender. To keep himself alive. But meanwhile, on the bottom side of the map, Pawn's doing Pawn things. Just on his own, clearing things out. And he's just having a whale of a time. That's why we see the roam down from Faker. He tries to make them pay for having Azir. Not in the mid lane. But it's under a turret. Out a turret being up makes that play a lot more trying than perhaps it would have been if they had already taken out a mid lane turret. Wasn't enough map space for them to punish King Zone as Ezreal, Tom Kent. So it's always going to be hard to fully hold them accountable. So they disengage. Rascals flashes down, but no other real cost to speak about. Nice little win around the map, and we're in such a weird meta. Who's to say? Yeah. what it will mean in a week's time. But the match scores matter. It's week four. No longer is it the early part of the season. We're smack bang in the middle. And this is third versus fourth as well. This is playing for top three, basically. There's one point that separates SKT and Kingzone right now. And if you were watching in week number one, you would laugh at me for saying that, for having that prediction, having that suggestion, because Kingzone looked leagues behind SKT. But now you can see... This is a pretty linear goal graph pointing towards a King Zone win. And King Zone also have two OP things. They have extra gold generation from the quests, which are going to be poked down from time to time against melee champions like Faker and any grouping that's done by SKT. And they have an obnoxious amount of wards. Oh, and they've got almost a kill on Demata here as well. Has to flash, even uses the ultimate when he probably didn't need to. That's panic stations here ensuing for SKT. But that's when it... When Ezreal has done as much damage as he has recently. You take every precaution. Well, you know, you also do that when your former best friend just starts shooting you in the head. Because I could imagine I'd be battling with some emotions uh, there as well as Kaz gets the knockup onto Faker. Doesn't get pulled back, but there's another knockup available. Doesn't land it there onto Faker, but does use the stopwatch. Tries to keep himself alive. This Silas so far has basically done nothing this game. As Def just hanging out by himself. Look at this screen. Look how many wards are happening when they're yeah. trying to fight in their own jungle. There's a vision <laughs> advantage for King Zone everywhere they go. They can plonk down wards every back. They're getting nine sight stone wards from the quest and two control wards each. I didn't know there was a cheat code for 100% vision, but apparently King Zone have found it here on the Frost Mancy patch. Which ones can you remember? Black Sheep Wall. Black Sheep Wall is, yeah. of course, the famous one. I, know, I only know the ones from uh, StarCraft, actually. I don't know. I know a lot of cheat codes from Doom and Wolfenstein. Yes, I days. do. IDDQD, IDKFA. We got yeah. double IDDQDs when Aatrox <laughs> starts popping up his... Uh, hey, that's true, that's true. And Silas steals it. So a lot going on here, but you can't steal. I feel Quests. like Death almost has one as well with the gigantic shields, Arden Sensor Look at coming the vision. in. Devour. Yes! It's everywhere. It's not a Christmas tree because... Christmas trees are normally multicolored. But the problem for SKT is you can't copy this. You can't get just four sweepers, and you ain't got no wards to put down yourself. Yeah. You could get stuck, you could get lots of wards, but you can't negate enemy wards because you can't keep the control wards up. With death doing so much poke, there's no great decision. And that is why Riot was smart to nerf this. There's no they've done so much over so long to remove vision from the game. It's why I was on the LPL hype train come summer when the Korean teams were too passive and didn't have the wards to play control style. But this week, the wards are back, and that's why the games are a bit wonky. 
And SKT just trying to find them, you know, kind of grit their teeth and get through what is a really awkward point. Their big hope is to get a third item. Remember, IE rush now on Kaisa seems to be the norm. AD, AD, so you get the pickaxe and have that. Yep. Q ready to go into Hurricane, and then you have 50% crit and the potential to pop off really hard in team fights. It's not the easiest because King Zone aren't squishy and can also have a lot of mobility to disengage, and there's no backline dive outside of perhaps Faker trying to get really deep into the backline. But the right Kaisa pop off, and maybe, just maybe, all these quests will be for naught. Well, Def does have his E on cooldown as Faker's looking to try and get in there, but doesn't do too much more than a chain lash. Rascal, flanked by Kuz, will come in and make sure that SKT can't do anything. Cloud Drake is available. King Zone looks like they just straight up don't care about it. Happy to give this one away. They already have one of those. And Earth, Wind, and Fire is not Earth, Wind, Fire, Wind, because that's not the name of the song. So they may as well give that one up. Important update, not enough Drakes to have Earth, Wind, and Fire on both sides, because the timer is Faker. Yeah, he's going to dive on oh! four. There's the Empress Divide onto three, like we were talking about, but it's a beautiful Devour coming in from Tucson, and no one's going to be taken out just yet. Cuz has the World Ender, so he's not under any threat. And Deft, it was like he wasn't get, getting hit by anything. Did 65% of Teddy's health bar with the ult. Ult available by Teddy, but smartly doesn't fully engage. Just worried about potential turn from the Karma in a team fight, but the poke remains supreme when the hard engages down. Oh, they Def. can just chase onto Faker. Yeah, they're trying to punish him. In comes Pawn, as now Faker tries to keep himself alive with the W, but it's not gonna be enough, and Rascal's gonna be able to grab that one. Faker dead, King Zone might look at Baron. Hard engage versus poke. If the hard engage doesn't get kills, the poke reigns supreme with the ults on cooldown. They're chasing for more. Yeah, looking for it. None of the Qs land here from Def, though, so they can't get any of the procs on the Iceborne Gauntlet. King Zone, no joy. Teleport to get Pawn back into the mix. And he's got that ultimate back off cooldown. 30 seconds still remains on Faker as Sun Turret up in the mid lane. And King Zone now will have so much space to get towards this Baron. How about an extra turret to give them even more vision? It grants while the enemy yeah. tries to annoyingly take it down. They have wards everywhere. King Zone don't have enough vision, Papa. That's exactly why they needed to put that one down. You can be down. so much more risky with how low you get the Baron down because of the vision, but they need to account for cleared. Here he is. Yeah, he is going to turn up. Not going to get there in time, though, as there's the special delivery. Cleared goes down. Deft has the auto attack. And that's the Baron, that's a kill, and that's everything going to King Zone. And that's the problem is you're basically Uber Eats here if you're <laughs> King Zone, because you can see the driver, you can see Clid come at any moment, because yep. you're always conspicuous. There's a GPS coordinate on everyone on the side of SKT. If you're the side of King Zone, you can rush it down. It looks risky because of how close to the pit Clid is, but they have vision everywhere on every single possible way you can enter the pit, and that's why it's too easy. They can just take him down. They get the Baron, and this silly game continues in King Zone. They feel like they're playing the 9.3 meta just a hair's better than SKT. They certainly are. I just want to point out that what Pawn just did there was actually really intelligent. Emperor's Divide first, and then scooped himself over the wall just to guarantee that there was no way Cleared was entering that pit. So that was a 100% success rate Baron over to King Zone, and that's exactly what you want to see. That's the gold standard for taking a Baron buff. And now we'll never talk about Rascal in a different game being beaten every 1-3-1. That was the big win condition for SKT because the extra wards meant the grouping was much more reliable. Poking was yeah. so safe because a poke comp with perfect vision doesn't get flanked Atlas. And now they roll in and Deft is a monster. And what do you do? You got no way for to answer Death's poke. It's the perfect dust vision, I guess, is what you could say is Faker trying to lash with some chains. But it looks like Cuz is happy to even fight him here at this stage, clearing out control wards. Faker's got 3,000 health. He's very, very tanky. Not necessarily able to punish King Zone for their pos positioning just yet. It's so hard to punish Ezreal, Tom Kench, and an OP amount of wars, but that's what King Zone has. Oh so my SKT, God. it's time to pull a magic trick. Where's it coming from? Death has 4,000 health wealth worth of shield when he gets all of the buttons from his teammates, and that is going to spell the end of the turret. He also has attack speed on hit magic damage. He has yep. a devour. It's just so much safety here. It's the dream for any AD carry. What do we say about King Zone on paper? Man, if Def carries them, that's going to be the only and way they can Def's do it. And what is Def's problem? Slightly over-aggressive plays a lot of the time. This, that's how you play in this composition. Oh, yeah. You never have to drop auto attacks. Yeah. You know, people always criticize AD carries for running away and not kiting back and doing damage. It'd be just ridiculous for Ezreal to ever have to think about not autoing. He has so much defensive utility on his yeah. side. I mean, he could basically attack move into a lane, and if the rest of his team 
aren't AFK, then everything's going to probably be all right. Here's a question. 5v5 team fight. You can see everyone on the enemy team. Yep. Ezreal, clo if Deft closes his eyes, <laughs> how does the fight go? Oh, I don't know. I, I, I He's think... attack moving the whole time. Okay, as long as he can right click someone and that someone. He's A moving forward. How does it go? I think they they may win as long as he's pressing They might buttons. win. Isn't that crazy to yeah. think? They might win. The it's only more problem, than zero percent. The only problem is that he's Ezreal and not like Caitlyn or That's Jinx. True. So Ezreal needs to press more buttons. As Faker once again finds a ward. Surprise, surprise. King Zone have so many of them here on the map. Of course, SKT not out of it yet, but a 10,000 gold lead is about as close to insurmountable as you can possibly get. Hasn't been fought back from so far in the LCK. 8,000 gold was the lead that Hanwha had over Griffin. Griffin still managed to win that game. This is a game that looks like SKT will not have an opportunity to get back Faker's to because look, look at Deft. Oh my god, the shields. Yeah, Faker once again going for that flank, but Sun Turret is available and so much vision is available. Infernal Drake might be something the King Zone want to look at, but they might go for this inhibitor first. Deft is able to chunk it down to at least half health here and the Q doesn't land from cleared. Just whenever random you see damage, siege. when Deft is doing so much. Whenever you see sieges like this, the converse point is always, when was the time the enemy should have tried and pulled the trigger? Yeah. There might not be a time. There's sun turret. There's wards on every flank. There's really no perfect time I could point to and say, that's when he should have gone in. That's the struggle here, is that with the three side stones, with how the game has played out, SKT, there's never a percentage time where I think that was really the time to pull the trigger. And obviously you can just pull the trigger and you might say, well, if you never pull the trigger, it's not going to work. But it's not like SKT are playing this poorly. They really have very few good decisions to pull. King Zone, go back, they shop again. They have six items very soon on Deft, who decides he needs a magic damage shield. He's going to get a more of Marmordius on the next back. And SKT fans are probably just watching on in frustration right now, but... That's two inhibitors down, and now they just do it all again, putting all the wards around the red jungle and taking down the third inhibitor of the game. Yep, this is the textbook play. And down towards the bottom side, your super minions will push in and guarantee man advantage. King Zone just need to not do the King Zone thing where they get slightly over aggressive. Deft and Pongo a little bit too far forward and give SKT a way back in because there are bounties aplenty on this King Zone squad. Cuz moves on over. The problem is, is that King Zone can't get caught out of position. This is the perfect King Zone patch because they have full information all the time. No excuses for sure. Yeah. You definitely knew about it as uh, Mardis oh health bar. Oh my god. Okay, Dev doesn't land the last Mystic shot. Victor's struggling with the super minions and that minion wave coming by in about 15 seconds. What do Kings want to do? Baron spawns in 30. SKT, you know, they're not getting vision on that Baron without a blue trinket. They don't have any. It even feels bad to work out what trinket you take in this damn yeah. game. Yeah. Exactly, and it feels like Sweeper is where the money's at. But Blue Trinket might now have to be the way, because you can't really beat. Yeah. Because it's always been a bit of a thing, right? Because you take down Yellow Trinket, Red Trinket beats that, then you go Blue Trinket to get around the fact that you can't get over all the wards, yep. and that beats Sweeper, but they kind of get everything on the yeah. side of King Zone. They, uh, they know what move's coming, you know? That's the reality here. They've got the whole cam, if you know poker, so... He goes to that. Let's see if SKT can make something happen. Yeah, they're trying items. to blow up Deft, but he's already well and truly back in this one. Faker goes into his golden form as Kuz going to get devoured. Tucson going to keep him alive as Kuz diving on forward. World Ender is going to put him back up again. Has the GA as backup after that one as well as Clid tries to get in, but Deft down to about half health. Has the shields back up again as Marta's taken uh -oh. down by Pawn. The Empress Divides are traded backwards and forwards, but it's King Zone that's able to come out on top. The double comes in for Pawn. That's the ace, and that'll be the game. Triple kill for Pawn. Is Azir is super good, but this game has been super weird. SKT at least are able to force the fight, but at this point, it's against double Infernal Drake. The damage has been done from the early game, and King Zone getting all the wards, playing quintessential Frostmancy, will take down game number one as they look to upset SK Telcom T1 on the first day of patch 9.3, no hotfix enabled. Yep, and I feel like th there's also a draft phase for Frostmancy as well. Khan was the one that managed to get the real one, where you start the game with uh, your Frostfang, and you, you've got the Kleptomancy as well, and then we've got Airy, and we start with a Corrupting Pot, and then build it uh, on the side of, of Rascal, and then Pawn in the mid lane does it with Hail of Blades, but he also has one, and Death builds one late. All this sort of stuff, it's just insanity. But Kingzone were the ones that were able to get the work done in the end. Bajillions of wards and uh, not a lot of options for SKT.
End of the day, King Zone look at the patch, they dissect the fact that, man, there are some options available to get the Ezreal, and the timings were weird, right? They started corrupting potion on the top side, but they knew that it wasn't as much about the gold generation. It's that if the game gets to a certain spot, the risky plays for a siege comp aren't so risky when yep. you just know everything. It's like when you watch a horror film and someone told you every timestamp for the jump scares, you might get a little if bit If you had spooked. a mini-map in a horror yeah. film, it would not be a horror film anymore. But you got yeah. all the spoilers, right? You knew. There was complete omniscience here. You, yeah. Black Sheep Wall was in. You knew what was happening. There was no fog of war. Nope. It was just King's own vision. And with the vision toggles, King's own able to take it down. And how do SKT adapt in game number two? Maybe remove the Ezreal. At least one Sightstone has to go away. Yeah, and I feel like Ezreal has been a tool that SKT has been able to use very, very well, and also one that Deft is extraordinarily capable on. So it's an easy thing to take out of the equation. We're going to be switching sides here as well. So uh, we'll see whether they're the ones that are able to get their hands on it. SKT decided not to first pick it in game number one. So what the options are is uh, going to be an interesting one because Silas being first picked, mm. For SKT, what did Silas do that game? Couple of Emperor's Divides, maybe, but otherwise, just Faker couldn't get much done on the champion. They could just never hit the side lane and Good dunk God. on Karma, as we see 30,100 damage. Let's put the numbers here, 17, 22, 31, about 36,000 damage altogether. Done yep. by SKT, so King Zone able to roll through there. He does the same as the rest of his team, about 50% damage share. I remember Def doing 50% damage share a lot at 2014 Worlds, and they almost made it to the final. 2015 as well, he didn't Did stop. Samsung Blue, and like you say, had some great Deft hands. So good to say when his name's Deft, but on EDG <laughs> as well. Yeah. So welcome back, Deft. Already warming up on that four-match win streak. Won't it be a sweet five-match win streak if they take down SK Telecom along the way? Well, they certainly could do that if they can come back from our next break and take them down in game number two. But I think all of us want to get three games in this series. We'll have to see whether SKT can fight back or whether it is going to be that 2-0 victory. We'll have a short break, and we'll see you after.